burnt my grilled cheese but that was my lunch I decided to try to do grilled cheese again but this time I burnt it so let's just clean up so I can get cooking and put on what I really wanted to do this video about is um, a crock pot chicken recipe that I came up with so I hope you enjoy For this recipe, you will need some skinless and boneless chicken thighs. I bought two packages of it to try to make eight servings. There should be 12 chicken thighs, because there's six in this one and six in the other. After getting the chicken out of the, the wrapper, you'll need to rinse it all off with some cool water. Just rinse the chicken off and then get some paper towels and put them on a plate, the, the paper towels on a plate, and then you can place the chicken thighs on top of the plate on the paper towels and pat them dry before, so they won't be like all soggy and everything. But yeah, I'm gonna like drain the, the chicken juice, <laughs> the bloody water, I guess, off, get the towels, place them on the plate like that. And then, oops, I dropped a knife and then just get one of the thighs i think i said breast a minute ago these are thighs chicken thighs and pick out any of the little hard gristly parts i don't know what they are but these should be boneless and skinless kind of open them up and look at them make sure they're rinsed off well and make sure you wash your hands and all the area immediately after handling chicken because it can get you sick It's probably 10 years old, um, at least. It's a newer one. I even have an older one from like the 90s. But I'm sure they have them now that are not with the knob. I'll try to find one in Amazon and link it in my description in case you want to get one the same as mine. But this is how you do things in a crock pot. So I'm getting out my measuring spoons and trying to show you it's uh, one teaspoon is what you need to use to scoop out one teaspoon and I'm making sure I point it out to you there and I'm using sage and we're gonna use two teaspoons of sage you could probably level it off but um, I went ahead and do a heaping teaspoon I'm trying to make it a little more flavorful with the spices because I'm inventing this because I didn't have any of the ingredients of different 
ones that I saw for crock pot, so I'm kind of going with the ingredients I have. And this is, I think, I don't know how to say it, it's like mar, I don't know why I don't show it to you much. It's margem, mar, margem. Yeah, it's on there, I just barely point it to you. But if you don't have that, you can use thyme. So you could do sage or marjoram. I just did that. So you do two tablespoons of sage, one, oh, and one, not tablespoon, teaspoon. And here's a couple of teaspoons of salt, just regular old iodized salt. And then we are going to do a chili powder. Looks like one teaspoon of chili powder. I'm making all the seasonings to go sprinkle on the chicken. It's time to put the chicken thighs in the crock pot. So I'm doing half of the chicken thighs, which is one package. Spread it out and put it all, cover the bottom of the crock pot and line them all up. And before you touch anything else, you're gonna need to walk over to the sink, wash your hands and dry them to come back. Cause you don't wanna be spreading chicken juice all over the place. So that's how it looks. And there's the other pile that's gonna go on top of it, but we need to put the seasoning on the first layer. So we're gonna get the little seasoning mix that I made and we're gonna sprinkle it all over the top of the first layer of chicken thighs. And then we'll get the other chicken thighs and layer it right on top. So then we could sprinkle the seasonings on top of that.
everything's all in the crock pot, it's time to turn it on. And depending on how fast you want it cooked, you could do low for like six hours or high for three hours. Um, I'm going to put it on low or high. Let's see. I think we need to do it high. I need it cooked in four hours. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on high. And after it's cooked, then you just put it on warm. Hopefully someone's home to turn it to warm when it's all done. The longer it cooks, the more shredded it gets. So even if it cooked for a longer amount of time, you would just have shredded up, falling apart chicken meat, which is really good for uh, sandwiches and such. And just to make it all good, you have to make sure you clean up anything. It's good to clean up while you're going, but before you leave and let your crock pot be cooking all day, clean up the kitchen. So when you come home, you just have your um, food ready and a clean kitchen so you don't have to have a mess to try to eat in. I was at the post office and outside the post office there was a high pitch squeal still happening. Yeah. I'm showing the people who watch my video because I showed it on another video like a week ago and it's still that high pitch sound and I don't know why they won't stop it. Okay, so we're at the clearance center, the Goodwill Bins, and my crock pot's cooking at home for a few hours, and we'll check it when we get back, and then I'll make the sides, whatever I decide to make, depending on how it is for dinner. But we'll go in, we'll see if we find any good deals, we'll come out, we'll tell you about it, because again, you can't film in these bins, but maybe if I get permission someday I'll be able to. Well now we have made it back home and I noticed that my husband put it on warm for us so now the chicken has been just sitting there warming and let's see what we're gonna make for sides. Well we'll need two cups of water because we're going to make some white rice on the stove. So you need two cups of water and then one cup of rice and a little bit of salt. Let's have some corn on the cob as well. It had some frozen in there, so you put all of them in the pan empty and first. That's what the instructions say on the back. And now I'm going to add the rice and the salt to the, you gotta bring the, the water to a boil for the rice first. So you bring the two cups of water to boil and now let's stare at the boiling water.
a tight fitting lid on the pot of the rice after you put the rice in the water. You turn it down to medium, um, to medium low. Right there is having a medium and let it uh, boil for 20 minutes. Do not lift the lid for 20 minutes. You have to trust it. You can turn it down a little bit, but now we need to cover the corn on the cob with just enough water to cover cover it so that all of them are submerged and underneath the water and so far it looks like it's like going to be four or five cups because that was two and then two more so that's four and then I put like one more about five cups of water in this big thing should be okay and then you turn that on high and you bring it to a boil so that's what you do next Puzzles for fifteen dollars. Excellent. To reflect upon it all. It's been a while since we stumbled out, since you dragged me out from the dark. Even now, when time has passed, I now that the water has come to a boil over the corn on the cob, you need to cover it, turn the heat off and cover it and let it sit while for about five minutes. Um, I went ahead and decided I wanted some french fries, so I'm gonna make them in the oven. Instead of the rice, I wanted fries because I ended up deciding to make shredded chicken burgers, like a sandwich made out with hamburger buns, and I just wanted fries instead of the rice but other people wanted the rice so we're all good it's been a while since you found me here i was in the mud under all yeah it's been a while but i remember it Try to listen. 
listen instead, won't you? i
just a few more seconds, even minutes, like a minute or two at the most. I'm, I'm on the last thing. Cleaning, just putting the corn cob things away that we use for corn cob. Cleaning those off. I've already done all the big stuff. See if there's anything else in here. Clean off this and I'll be ready. enjoyed watching me clean cook clean cook clean cook clean again it's just a bunch of that but I am cleaning up I'm gonna go watch random movie night with my son now and I hope that if you try this recipe that you enjoy it and that you clean up along the way and you can see that even when you do a crock pot meal, it's still very time consuming to keep a tidy kitchen and make a good meal. I'm still gonna try to make that Texas sheet cake from this cool cookbook I got. Anyway, like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks, bye. Here's a little bit of bonus footage if you're still around. I got 16 puzzles, including this one, at the bins today. So when I got these 16 puzzles, it was a really good deal because it was only about less than $15. So that's less than a dollar a puzzle. And that's really cool because we got that cool waterfall one, which was a sun coast or something like the sun's out. And that one is a spring bock. This one I think is a buffalo and it's really cool looking woodsy, outdoorsy, a thousand piece puzzle. Here is a glitter and gold. I am not sure the brand, but the, the picture was really cool. 750 piece puzzle. And then we had a, um, oh, I just saw it right there. The Saturday Evening Post by Norman Rockwell one. This one, the box was damaged from a sticker, or I, uh, from a Goodwill sticker from the bins was on there, but it just rips it off. There's a completely sealed Norman Rockwell. I don't know where that one came from or what the brand is, but it's pretty, it's all the way sealed. This one is a vintage Springbok and there's another vintage one right there, but it's not a spring buck. It's a something solid gold. I haven't looked that one up yet, but I love to get the vintage puzzles. Um, there's this glow in the dark one that has this really cool raccoon right there. I think I'm going to start putting puzzles together. If that's something you would like to watch, just some nice puzzle putting together. I will do some of these puzzles before I list them for sale and then that way we can know if they're all complete and all that this is a thomas kincaid schmidt i think is what it's called and it's a 2000 piece puzzle it's adorable and this last one is a schmidt as well is that how you say it anyway it's a lisa parker it's called mystic cats and the cats are just gorgeous i'm really excited about this one here too but this is a thousand piece not two thousand but look at the cats and there's a witch in there. It's just so cool looking. I love that art. So if you stuck around for this bonus footage, thanks so much, cause look at this. We still have four more here. We have the Disney Ravensburger. Is it Ravensburger or Ravensburger? I'm gonna say Ravens. And then we have, uh, that was Little Mermaid. And we have this one, which is the wolves, with the sun coming through the trees. It's so cool, both thousand piece ones. And we also have this bookstore one, which I think the bookshop is adorable since I sell books as well and 
books and puzzles that just goes so well together. And finally, I'm Timon and Pumbaa. Uh, some of you may know me as that. And that is the Lion King. It's so cool. The bins are my new friend for getting puzzles. And you'll see in a couple of future videos that I've, I'm already making um, that I get a lot more. And I'm going puzzle crazy. All right, bonus footage over. Bye-bye.